Hey Math 43, I had a question coming out of chapter 8, number 111. And here we were told that we had some seats on an airline and it said we had a, an airline wanting to estimate the average number of unoccupied seats over the past year. So they had a sample of 225 flights and they were keeping track of the number of unoccupied seats. And we were told the sample mean was 11.6, the sample standard deviation was 4.1. So those are the first things uh, you see me, oops, wow, that was fun. These are the first things you see me talking about. There's my mean, there's my standard deviation. I had 225 flights, and that would te technically make N minus one, 224, or really what we call in stats, those are the degrees of freedom. So part B says define your variable and then define x bar as well. So on any individual flight, I'm taking, I'm not taking, I'm keeping track of the number of unoccupied seats, right? And you see right here, I put on uh, an airline flight. But if we think about this over the long haul, over the 225 flights, x bar is the average number of unoccupied seats in our sample of 225 flights. So I really want to stress here that this was the average of your sample, right? That's why we're on a sampling distribution where this was just one flight, right? Population variable, right? So this is up at our population level. And this is down on our sampling distribution because we have quite literally a sample. And then once we get there, they say, hey, let's go ahead and construct an interval. So, oh, excuse me, let's, let's figure out the distribution. So since we're on a sampling distribution, we know we're gonna be on the T distribution. And T's, again, if, if we go back, all right, let me, let me draw the Z curve, right? We've been talking about the standard normal curve, which we've got a zero here, right? And then the deviations go out by units of one. But if I wanna talk about a T distribution, right? All that happens there are the tails are a little bit lower, excuse me, higher, and the peak is a little bit, I said that wrong, the tails are a little bit higher and the peak is a little bit lower. So this might be T of 224, but keep in mind that once you get close to a T with 30 degrees of freedom, it's pretty much like the Z distribution. So we really wouldn't be able to distinguish those two curves. But at any rate, my, my official distribution is the T distribution of 224 degrees. And, and your book likes to use this notation, and I think it's pretty succinct, so I, I would go with it also. And then the next thing it, or we're asked is to construct a 92% CI. So let's think about the fact that we have a 92%. All right, let me write CI. So not actually a 95, not the industry standard. We're gonna have a slightly smaller margin of error because we have a lower confidence level. All right, so the first thing we always wanna do, right, is check our assumption. So it's a random sample stated, central limit theorem's kicking in. I'm actually gonna grade myself here. I, I wrote the sample standard deviation was 4.1 and I should put here, this is 4.1 unoccupied seats. All right, so the units of any statistic have the same units as our variable. And then you see me going ahead and I went and I put the title, right? I usually call that the second step in my write-up. So I've got a one sample mean TCI, right? 224 degrees of freedom. And the next thing I have to do is actually construct this thing. So we wanna point out what I know and then what I have to go fill in. And, and I, I'll have to use a table or a calculator for that. So we know the sample mean is 11.6. We know the sample standard deviation is 4.1. And we know the sample size is 225. So the big thing that I have to figure out right here is how did I get this 1.759 for my critical value? And I'm gonna show you in a moment two different ways to do that, just depending on where you're coming from. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the calculator or at least my calculator, right? Or I can use a table. So I wanna show you both options there. And I also wanna mention that if I was doing this, and I mean, I actually did, I would go and I would use my calculator. You can see all my work over here. And I would actually get to the answer first. I would know, okay, I'm going 11.119 to 12.081. Those are the average number of unoccupied seats in our, um, in our flight or our sample of 225 flights. And then you can see me interpreting it down here Right, we're 92% confident that the true average is um, between 11.119 seats and 12.081 seats. Okay, great. Now I really wanna get back to here. All right, so that's where the things are gonna be, I think probably most confusing. So how this works, and I'm just gonna draw on this distribution because it's here, is if I want a 92% confidence interval, I have to figure out what percentile this is. So I'm gonna put percentile, and I'm gonna put a little question mark right now. 
right? So what percentile am I looking at right there? Let me erase my arrow because it's kind of in the way. So how this works is if we have 92% under the, or 92% of the area under that curve inside that shaded region, we have 8% outside because of the complement rule and because the sample space has got to be 100%. So basically through symmetry, we have 4% on a side. So what that would make this, if I think about from here all the way down, I have 92 plus 4. So in terms of what percentile is this, this is technically the 96th percentile. Okay, let me write 96th. So if I was going to use my calculator and I want to find my T star value, I'm going to do inverse T and I'm going to put 0.96, and then the degrees of freedom, how many did we have? We had 224 here. So I'm going to go ahead and let me click over to my calculator. All right, and let me clear all this out. We're going to go second VARS, and let's see, here's inverse T, and I'm going to put the 96th percentile with 224 degrees of freedom, and you're looking at 1.759. So let me move back over. Oops, excuse me. That is where I got that number. Now let's say you didn't have the calculator because some of the TI 83s and 84s don't have that calculator button and you had to use your table, all right? What will happen is you're gonna get close. You're not gonna exactly get 1.759, but we're gonna get close. So I wanna keep in mind that we had this many degrees of freedom, all right, and we wanna go 92% confident. So let me go back up to our table, all right? And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a look and I'm going to say, well, I had 224 degrees of freedom. So I'm kind of wedged in here. All right. Because I had 224 degrees of freedom. Now, I have not achieved 1,000. All right. I have passed 100. So, okay. So what that means is at best I'm going to be able to use, and let me highlight this. Ooh, let's see if that will go straight. Fantastic. There. And now I also am kind of guessing through here. Right, because I, I don't have a 92% column, right? But again, we're just gonna do the best we can. All right, because I think you'd give me that 92%, it's, it's in between 90 and 95. So if I look at the two critical values I'm kind of dealing with, it's somewhere between 1.660 and 1.984. So what I wanna do, and let me scroll this, I'm gonna take the average of those. And it's not exactly the average, all right? We could get into a whole calculus conversation about this, but I'm just gonna find out what's in the middle, and I'm gonna use that as my estimate. So let me go back over to my calculator, and let's take 1.660 plus 1.984, and divide that by two, and we get 1.822. So you can see we're a little off, all right? And that's okay. All right, so if I was doing this, the table version, this would have been 1.822. And the cool thing is, no matter what, you have this on your calculator, right? You can at least get to the answer. And if you're thinking, well, that's a pretty big difference, 1.759, 1.822, I hear you. And so until all of the calculators have that inverse T calculation on it, we're just going to go ahead and on, on homework problems and on deep dives, we'll approximate them. But I'm not going to put those on quizzes and tests because I don't think that's fair. I think it's a good, a good conversation for all of us to have. Like, hey, we're getting close, right? We're estimating it, but we're not quite there yet. So I just want you to hear that's how you would at least get a, an idea of what would go here, right? 1.822, it's close enough to 1.759, right? It's not like we're, we got a critical value of like 13.4. That would be like crazy big. So we got close enough to 1.759 and we have a good estimate. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.